ladies and gentlemen, welcome our former vice president, the apostle, in the evangelist, Navos Mumba. Let's lift our hands before God, everybody, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, open the windows of heaven. Let the rain of the Holy Spirit descend upon us. Yes, Lord. We decrease that you may increase. Do it again as you did it 2,000 years ago. Free us. Liberate us. Fill us. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouted amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated in God's presence. I was so ready to jump and skip until Bishop Mulenga began to talk about 30 years ago. Then tears began to roll across my face. I've only got a few minutes tonight, and I want to dedicate the next few sentences to the gospel artists of our season. And those of you that God has raised to support them, to stand behind them, to make them become what God has always intended for them to become. But specifically, I want to speak to all of you that God has called in this trade. Tears were rolling across my face because, ladies and gentlemen, I did not think I would live long enough to see what I'm seeing. It was a dream. The 70s, when we began to crisscross this country, preaching the gospel of Christ, we had no gospel artists. There were no special gospel artists. We had choirs from the UCZ, choirs from the Baptist Church. Those of us that were leading worship in our churches, in the assemblies of God, and yes, I was a worship leader. That's how I started my ministry. I was not preaching when I started. I was a worship leader. But they didn't call us worship leaders. They just called us song leaders. Because we just led everybody in the congregation in the songs from the red hymnal of the assemblies of God. There was no special artist who would come out as a solo and begin to make a name and to attract crowds on their own. We didn't have that. But I saw it in the spirit that one day, this country dedicated to God will produce young men and women in the generation to come who lift this thing to a higher level. And God has done it. I would like to congratulate all the gospel artists. It's been a long journey for you. I'll tell you why. We celebrate this amazing success of the gospel industry in Zambia. As I've said, there was no gospel artist as we know you today. But today you have fought against all odds to even attract crowds. Nobody, no gospel singer would attract a crowd because people came to church to hear church songs. Only so-called secular musicians had crowds in stadiums and halls. But the moment you call yourself a gospel team, you were not attracting crowds. I know that sounds funny and wrong, but it's true. I've lived long enough to see you fight against these that are so professional until the gospel artists squeeze their way out and by the grace of God, they are standing and commanding the respect that they never did. So today... 
those of us that come from the yesteryears, as we hand over the baton to the next generation. My spirit tells me that our labors have not been in vain. Jesus, after healing the sick, turning water into wine, healing the paralytic man, dying and rising from the dead, turns around and says to his disciples, you shall do greater things than I have done. The question is, what greater things could they do beyond what Jesus did? I sense in the spirit tonight that God wants me to say those words tonight. You, this generation of Zambian ministers, you shall do greater things that never smumba all these imakandos and all these have tried to do. You shall do greater things than this. The spirit of the Lord is upon you to transform this nation into the Christian nation it has always been meant to be. You are the future that we always prayed for. You are the future we always waited for. You are the future that has now come. And I want you to sing with clarity, boldness, and the comfort of the Spirit. Because you are the generation for which we fasted, for which we sacrificed, for which we paid a high price. You are that generation. So, we start to retreat in the shadows of yesterday. Slowly we retreat as the light begins to dim on us. He switches it on to you now. As you start to step into your season. And no devil shall hold you back. No devil shall hold you back. Where we could not step, you shall step. What we couldn't say, you shall say it. Where we couldn't go, you shall go. This is the generation. And I say thank you to God Almighty for allowing me to live long enough. To see this generation. Before I see it, I want to leave four P's with you. Number one, gospel artists. This is not a commercial enterprise. It's not just you standing up to sing. The first P is prayer. Why do I ask you to pray? I want you to pray because... Only when the anointing of God takes you is your ministry going to have an impact. Anybody can sing. A drunk can sing. A criminal can sing. But we are not talking about ordinary singing. We are talking about being immersed. It is anointing. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can break yokes. If you want to be a gospel singer, be prayerful. Pray, pray, and pray. Because out of prayer, you are going to see permanency of the anointing in your life. Jesus needed the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Heavens opened, a dove came, the Spirit descended upon him, and he changed the world. The church on the day of Pentecost, 120 received the power of the Holy Ghost and they changed the whole world. 2,000 years later, Christianity is the number one religion in the world because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you want your ministry to last, pray. Be a prayerful musician. This is not commercial display. This is under the anointing. So, number one, pray. Number two, plan. After you pray, 
the Spirit of God will give you ideas on how to manage your ministry. And here I'm talking about a strategy will be inspired in your heart. Listen to this. As a young preacher, never swum in this country, I had no people to look to to learn what to do. I didn't have them. I was learning by mistakes. I didn't have a role model in Zambia until Reinhard Bonke came. But he was in Germany. I was here. So what I did was I prayed. I fasted. We lived fasted lives. I prayed and in my prayers, God showed me what to do. He said, go and have a crusade. I said, what is a crusade? He said, people who come together, you preach and they get saved. The Lord would say, get this message on television. I said, nobody has ever done it. He says, do it. Because you are praying, inspiration for strategy and planning will come. You should not be a copy of another artist. You should be original. The problem we have is you see your friend sing a certain way, you also want to sing like him. You will never grow. You have a special calling, a special gift, different from Kaputula, different from Temwana, different from Ephraim, different from all the Chungus. You are you. You may not have as many Facebook likes as the next one, but in this business, it's not about likes. It's, it's not. It's not about Facebook likes. It's about what God likes. And if you can flow with God, it shall be well. Be original. Don't be a copycat. Be original. Just do it your way. And you'll be surprised how God will anoint your in unique gift. So plan. Don't just be a minister. The difference between two ministers is because of sometimes planning. Some people who sing better than others are not as successful as those who don't sing as good. Because they add administration and planning and strategy to their gift. When I started to preach, there were churches, Pentecostal churches didn't have offices. They didn't have secretaries. We preached on Sunday, collected the offering, put it in my pocket and shared it with my wife and she goes to the market to buy food so that we can eat. There was no accountant because we were not organized. Victory Ministries started to have offices. I had secretaries. I had full-time pastors doing diff I had technicians. I had television crews. Something that had never happened in this country. But how did it happen? Strategy. Planning. And putting character to your gift. Put shape to your gift. You are an industry we cannot lose. And thirdly, then perform. After you have prayed, after you have planned, now perform. Perform, I'm using it in a way that when you come to this pulpit, listen to me, all of you that are called by God, when you come and hold the microphone, I want you from this day to assure yourself that I am rightly here and God is with me and whatever is about to happen, God shall touch it beyond you when you are on the platform I want you to be confident that God has planted you there that's performing like that will be your last show before you die I don't care the crowd whether it's 20 200 2000 or 20,000 you do it the same sing like it's your last session and then lastly is a concern of my life for the young people. You pray, God shows you a, a strategy, you plan, then after planning you perform, then after performing you prepare. Prepare for what? 
prepare, and I know you don't like this, but prepare for your day of exit. Listen, listen young people. I have been in the ministry for 44 years in this country. I have preached this gospel and I'm now speaking to you as your father. There is a time Reinhard Bonke told me when I, he called me to Germany to school me about ministry. He said, Nevers, life is a platform with curtains. And when your time comes, the bell rings, you are now the one on the show and the curtains open. And you'll be on that platform, some people, for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, some 40 years, even 50. But once your season, that scene has finished, the curtains will close. And you now go away behind the platform. And a new cast will come on. It's at that point when you now, the light is dim on you, that people are no longer clapping for you. People forget the songs you, you start, you actually authored. The songs you sang, the name you made. People begin to forget you ever existed. The people who used to bring cars and money no longer do it. They are giving it to the younger generation. There's a whole new team coming on. So how do we help you to prepare for your exit? When you make money, invest it in yourself, in your family. Because this is like boxing or, or football. You know, after you have expended yourself, people forget you and look for other stars. And I want, I'm tired of not only seeing gospel singers who blessed us. They can't even afford to buy a coffin for them when they die. It's worse for pastors from my generation. They didn't prepare. Anytime they die, it's a crisis. They have nothing. And that's why our limitation in impacting our generation is becoming evident. But plan for your exit invest and make sure your family does not curse you when you die make sure your wife or your husband blesses you when God calls you home because go home we are going to go so invest prepare for your exit and make sure you're doing the right thing and finally I want to challenge you for you gospel artists, for this ministry to be powerful, place value on what you do. The value you place on it is the value people will see. If you come here like you are just playing games, people will not take you seriously. But when you have a concert, let excellence be the name of what you do. Excellence for the kingdom of God. I love you and may God bless you. May he prosper you. May he keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Put your hands together and bless God.